Okay, 25. Uh, frequency distribution is a grouping of data into mutually exclusive categories showing the number of observ observations in each category. Now, what did that just say? What's mutually exclusive? It means that everything has to fit in some category, right? So we're looking at age in this group. We may have people between 20 and 30, maybe between a little older, older than 30 and under 40. And may have it over 40 and under 50, or up to 50. And so that's, that's what you would see, right? So can you imagine that if we group people in those categories, we would see a grouping that kind of looks like a bell-shaped curve. But there, what kind of data is that? Could be continuous if you look at infinite number of possibilities. You know, as far as age, but you could also make it discrete if you look at people and you put them between categories. You know, we're only looking at people. If you look at it that way, then that's discrete, right? So we're looking at numbers of people. But if you look at the ages, then that could be um, that could be continuous data, right? So it depends on how you look at that. But either way, you put them in the categories, and then and it becomes a frequency diagram. Our distribution. It says construct a frequency distribution involving collect raw data. So it wants us to do that. I don't think we need to do that. But here's here's a picture of it. You see, this is actual. What kind of data is this? This is could be continuous data, right? What well, we divided it up into discrete units, and so it looks real choppy. Looks like bar chart. Does that make sense? And so what we're trying to do is trying to create a frequency diagram or a bar chart based on, on, on that. So that's the frequency distribution. Now, what does the word frequency mean? How often something appears? So what we're trying to do is find out how often data appears. And we got to put it in certain categories. So we could, we could look at, uh, if we said males versus females, how many different bars will we have? Two, right? Everybody fit in that category. If we had eye color, we could have more, right? We have variations of all kinds of different eye color. If we had color of shirts, we could have more. You know? Yeah. Okay, what you described is a Likert scale, and that would be a five-point scale. Strongly agree, or strongly disagree, strongly agree, and all the way in the middle, neutral in the middle, maybe. And so you could have, um, you could collect that data, and it could look like a bar chart, and that could be discrete data, because, uh, but it would be qual quantitative, qualitative in nature, because you ask somebody's opinion, and then you would count it up which means that you, you're trying to quantify an intangible, a qualitative, qualitative data. Okay, does that make sense? Did you follow what I'm saying? So, so you can, if you can count it, then it's a numerical data. It's quantitative, right? If it's based on something that, that's just an opinion, like what do you prefer, then that's qualitative data. But if you ask people about their opinion and you start counting, then you turn qualitative data into a number. Does that make sense? So what's your opinion? You agree or strongly agree or strongly disagree? Okay, strongly you disagree. Okay, so you're after, you're not quite strongly disagreeing. I don't even know what the sub question is yet. But 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 see that's a opinion, right? And so that's qualitative data. Now, if I ask that a whole bunch of times, start counting, then I'm quantifying an in, a, a qualitative a feeling, right? And so now, and once I have that, and if this was strongly disagree and strongly agree up here, and there's only five of them, then we could put it in a bar chart and actually count it. And we could say the frequency of people, the numbers of people who strongly disagree are 10 or 15, over 15. The people who are right in the middle are 20. You know, that's kind of what we might do that with that. But that's a frequency diagram because we're trying to figure out the frequency of something happening and we're putting it in a picture that we can all see, right?
And this is a frequency diagram too. It's just a continuous diagram. It's not. It's it's a little different. Okay. Let's see. Uh, class midpoint, a point that divides a class into two equal parts. Okay. So now, if we have a class frequency, the number of observations in a class, then the and, okay. Now there's three different concepts here. What's a class? Strongly agree is a class, right? Strongly disagree is a class. Now we can look at different ways. People who are between uh, 100 pounds and 150 pounds, that's a class. People between um, um, uh, over 150 and under uh, 200, that's a class. You know, so, so you can classify the data. Midpoint is a point that divides a class into equal parts. So we can say, what's the midpoint of 100 pounds and 150 pounds? About 25, right? 125. So that's the midpoint. Uh, class frequency, the number of observations in each class. If I was to ask you how much you weigh, and I say, here's your choices between 10 and 20 pounds, over 20 to 30 pounds, and over 30 to 40 pounds, and we say, well, how much does your heart weigh? <laughs> you're in love, it's 30. <laughs> you're not really, you're very mad right now, it's 10. <laughs> you know, so we could find some classification, right? And so the class frequency is how many times you fit in that class, how many items fit in that class. Does that make sense? That's really easy to see, right? Because bar charts are really easy to use. Class interval is at um, 10 points, you know, 10 pounds. That would be an interval. How much is it between? So it says the class interval is obtained by subtracting the lower limit from the higher limit. So if it was interval between, say, 150 and 100, then what's the class interval? 50. Does that make sense? Okay, this is all real basic stuff. And, okay, now this is kind of interesting. 